Hi everybody, we are gonna do a case here with the new iBridge Flex set. So this is the iBridge Flex that everybody's been talking about. This is a tool from Kian Lee Tool Plus, and I'm gonna show you uh, how to use it today to try and figure out whether or not an iPhone 6 has no image because of long screw damage, which it has in all three holes, or if something else is going on. And I was doing this case earlier, and this is my first time using the iBridge. I've watched Mark do it a few times, and I honestly thought that this tool, I was really skeptical, which is my nature, but I remember when they called me back in July and said, what do you think about a tool that kind of breaks out the uh, connector pin so you could measure? And I was like, nah, yeah, it's okay. Um, but I've been really surprised, and I think you will be too. This has actually taught me something that I didn't know about how the iPhone 6 image circuit works. So first, where do you get your iBridge tool? From iPad Rehab Supply, of course. So let's click over and uh, I'll show you how to get from iPadRehab.com. Click the supply store. So I'm not really great with e-commerce. We just love uh, trying out new tools. A lot of them we think are dumb, but every now and then there's one that's really cool. So we've got a few new things that we've put up here. So I made a category called new stuff so that you can find the new stuff. And in this category are our recent recommendations, um, including the new uh, Kianli. These stencils are awesome. Um, there, I think the other one, the main ones on, are on the second page here. These are the 3D black stencils. So we're a big fan of those. And uh, today we're going to talk about the new iBridge Flex set. So these things come in a set for iPhone 6, meaning camera, display, touch, all of the flexes that go in the iPhone 6. So you have to buy a flex set for each phone that you want to work on. So here's where you get those from iPad Rehab Supply. And let's go ahead and click off of that. And I'm going to show you this case. So let's start this case by looking at the board. This board is here for a connector repair. And like you guys know, connector repair usually means we we broke the connector troubleshooting something else because in the iPhone 6 and up, the connectors, they, they kind of just don't go bad on their own. So we put a new connector, this is an LCD connector on it, and then saw that it had backlight but no image. So let's take a look at this board, see what you guys think. All right, let's make this camera in focus. All right, uh, let's see. What's up, Jessa Carter from October 2018 Practical Board Repair School. What's up, Carter? All right, let's see what's going on here. This is the new connector that I just put on, but you can see that there is long screw damage, massive long screw damage here, which I briefly just kind of cleared out and looked, and I, it doesn't look like there's breaks in the LCM reset or the LCM power enable. Those are the two key lines that tend to get affected um, by uh, trace damage in iPhone 6. However, we've got more uh, screw damage. This is gone and tore up the board all around here. Most of this is ground, so that's not necessarily a big deal breaker, but you can ground out a trace for, for image under, under that spot there just by pressing the ground into it. And then we've got, let's see, does that one have long screw damage or not? Yeah, it does. I can see copper. Yes, yeah, so there's, that one also has long screw damage. Eh, sometimes that can make a phone not boot, but I don't think it's going to be related to our image problem. So we've got sort of a lot going on here. Plus, we have sort of an odd looking appearance over here. Plus, we just had a new connector, so maybe there's a problem with the actual connector. So there's a lot of variables of going on, why does this phone have no image? And this is a situation where I think the iBridge kind of shines because it lets you assess voltage and diode mode sort of all at once. So I'll show you how that works. So let's click back to our side cam. So let's, so this is my first time using it. I just opened this up today personally. So I'm kind of getting to know this. I'm not really an expert on it. So this is my first ever case using the iBridge. And is it going to uh, <laughs> meet the threshold that we require to recommend a tool? Would I get up and cross the room and, and get it? And the answer is yes. And I watched Mark actually do that during coursework because he was using them. His, his set was in the back. 
And he did. He actually got up out of his chair and walked back there to get it. All right, so this is what one of the flexes looks like for the in the iPhone 6 set. And since this is an iPhone 6, we're going to give it a try. So you can see what this thing does. It connects into the phone in the connector. And then it has this sort of breakout of all of the lines here for both the LCD connector and the touch connector. And then you can plug in a screen over here so that you can actually kind of see and measure voltage, live voltages with the screen connected. And as we're going to see in this stream, you got to have the, the screen connected in order to tell the device to generate some of these voltages because uh, otherwise it doesn't work. So having that screen connected, this thing is a real time saver for that. All right, <laughs> one of the other things I noticed trying to connect this a few minutes ago was, um, does anybody else feel like you can only connect these flexes like left-handed or right-handed? I do. Like I, it is, it will take me, it would take me like a half hour if I was forced to connect it this way. I can't do it. Like I, I have to spin it around. It has to be this way. It's funny. It's kind of like, I don't know, riding a bike or anything else. It's got, it can only go one way. All right, so now I'm gonna go ahead and I've got my I bridge and I have a problem with all of these, I name this, I this, I that, I Mesa, I rework station, I everything. Uh, can we stop doing that? That's, that's just uh, making things really hard to remember what these things are called. I keep calling it the I flex, but the I flex is something completely different. All right. Finally, a Europe daytime live stream. Yeah, because it's like 11 o'clock. All right. Yeah, rare time where it's not like a bus live stream. Okay, so here is this setup. And I'm going to drill down with a microscope so that you can read these things and you can see why did I put a pink thing on there. So let's take a look under the microscope and then we'll actually use this thing. All right, so let's go to the microscope. All right, now let's find what this looks like. So here's the eye bridge flex, and you can see all this stuff written on there, which is pretty cool. So this bottom side is touch digitizer, so we're going to skip up and up here. This is the LCD connector. All right, so let's kind of review this, and let's take a look over here on this side. So for... This is the opposite orientation to ZXW. That's going to be a little bit confusing. All right, so we have some of these important lines are actually written on here. So pin 34 is ground. Pin 30 is whatever that says. But it tells us that the diode mode reading should be red probe on ground, black probe right here. It should be about 1190 diode mode units. And then we have the negative 5v7 and the positive 5v7 power rails. So we could do a voltage test here on these pads and we can see what the diode mode reading should be. And then it kind of goes down the line. Now, and now some of these, it doesn't write the name, which is a little bit annoying because those are important. Specifically for the iPhone 6, because iPhone 6, one of the signature problems is here at pin 16 and pin 14. These are the key ones. These are part of the system of how the device knows that you plugged in a screen. So these guys are, they correspond to the broken traces, the traces that get broken in long screw damage. So here's our long screw damage. And for no image in iPhone 6, long screw damage actually severs the trace that I call lollipop, this one right here, that gets cut. This one is that LCD power enable line. And then the other one has this little sideways microvia over here. This guy is reset. This is the other one that gets broken. So those are the two ones that, that you know, get broken. And this is really, you can see still how like, it's really spongy. This is really like fractured. This is classic long screw damage and it's pretty severe. So is that actually causing a problem? I don't know, but the iBridge Flex, I've added this little pink label. Pin 16, that's my enable. That's that LCD power enable line. And pin 14, that's RS, that's my reset. So I know that those two lines, all right, correspond to trace damage. So let's start there maybe. Let's start with a diode mode reading on 14 and 16. And if we actually have a break in the 
the track there from lung screw damage, then we would expect to get OL, open line, instead of the you know, 0.430 reading. So let's go ahead and take those readings and see what we get. So let's bust out this guy. I like this guy because he's nice and bright. Oh my God, Chinese writing is annoying. Oh, that's not nice. I mean, if, you're, if you are a Chinese company making a tool that's gonna be used in China, you can write it in Chinese, bro. I think that it is, it is you know, a little bit ethnocentric to demand everything be in English. We can get sticky notes and we can translate. Or, you know what I'd like to do? I'd like to learn, I'd like to learn just enough Chinese to be able to read LCM Power Enable. That'd be cool. All right, let's do this. Uh, diode mode. All right, here we go. So diode mode. Isn't that nice and bright? I, I really like that. So diode mode. I'm going to do a red probe here on ground. So I'm touching ground over here. And now I'm going to touch pin 14 reset. And I'm getting 0.498 and printed on the flex is 430. So we're going to say that line is good. It's not open. Next one, enable. All right, enable. I'm getting instead of 430, I'm getting 0.5. 513 so that sounds like it should be good you know it's um uh sometimes though that one will get like a like the via you have to kind of push down and make pressure on it i think i actually will do that and see if that changes anything so i'm going to go under the microscope and i'm going to put pressure down on these vias all right let's see if does that change my diode mode reading or not probably not but let's see 14 all right reset and enable okay so we're going to say those lines seem good which is a surprise because this phone i would expect it to have long screw damage i mean look at it this phone looks like it couldn't be more classic for long screw damage um let me uh let me pull up my my chat window over here but according to this measurement, it doesn't seem to have long screw damage. All right, so there, there we go. Now I can see some chat. Okay, uh, let's go back to, the, to this repair. So let's do this. Let's go ahead and take a voltage test then, and we'll see if we can pick up any other problems. Let's go ahead and do that by getting a power source. So if you're going to do a voltage test, you got to change your multimeter to voltage. So DC voltage, DC voltage, and you got to apply a voltage. So we got to connect this sucker to a battery. Let's do it. All right. All right. So we've got our screen connected over here, which maybe you guys can see. And now I'm going to prompt this phone to boot with the charge port. So I'm going to just plug it into USB. And let's see if we can prompt it to boot. So I'm prompting it to boot. And I can see on DC power supply over here that it actually is booting up. It's consuming normal current. But my display here has no image, no image. And you can see, I don't know if you guys can see this or not, but if you look kind of in this crack here, I can see that it does have backlight. See that? Do you see that light there? So it does have backlight, but no image. So backlight and image are two separate problems. But this tells us that this screen is in fact detected by the device, which makes sense. According to, according to the iBridge, it doesn't have long screw damage, meaning that it is sending those enable signals uh, over to Chestnut. So why do we have no image? Let's see if we can find out. Let's do some voltage testing. So we are going to, let's see if we can kind of do this um, all at once. So I'd like for you guys to be able to see both of these things. So let's, let's see if we can move the multimeter over here and let's see if we can make it so that we're just looking at the multimeter. All right, perfect. Okay, and now we can see kind of at the same time the multimeter and the eye, eye bridge. 
Look at that. So hard not to call it iFlex. All right, so let's start with these five V7s. So according to our calculations, chestnut is being enabled. So we should see some voltage here. Let's see if we do. First, actually, we'll go ahead and let this be a teaching moment here. All right, so right now, zero volts. Ah! Zero volts. Ah! So problem. However, those are not going to be present unless the screen is connected, which it is, and the screen's got to be on. And right now, it's probably went to sleep. So I keep these sort of connected either to USB, so I can do a lot of this. Unplug, plug, and I know that would be the prompt to wake up the screen. So real quick, before it sleeps again, let's take this reading again. Oh, did it sleep again? That'd be even faster. All right, see, there we go, 5v7, 5v7. So our po these are positive and negative 5v7. So that's a good lesson there to not ever be trolled. You, you got to keep your screen awake, which means it's really probably best to take these measurements while the thing is booting up. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's pop the battery, let it rest. Now let's boot it. All right, so I just prompted it to boot. So now it's going through the boot up sequence, even though we can't see anything. We know that if we could, we'd see an Apple logo and that this display would be active. So let's check. Let's kind of check on some of these in voltage mode. And this is just so easy to like do these readings, which usually I don't because it's difficult. So let's see. There's our backlight voltage. Look at that, 17 backlight volts. And then we can kind of go down here and see what are the other you know, voltage, what, what, what's up with voltage on some of these other lines? How about PMU Alive? Did you know that PMU Alive comes from the PMIC, which it does, and it goes to the screen? And then I remember we figured this out a while ago that the way the device detects that you've got a screen there is that PMU Alive actually goes through the screen and it turns into Ah, wake up again, screen. Let's see, PMU Alive, 1.78. And here we go on pin number 14, reset. So 1.7, this actually goes from here through the screen and ends up showing up right here as the reset line. So that, that's without the screen connected, then PMU Alive doesn't actually make it through the screen. It doesn't actually come out and, uh, and, and go down the reset line. All right, let's wake this back up. Wake up. I think I, I need to change the batteries possibly in that. All right, wake up the screen. And let's check on some of our others. So let's check over here on this one, pin 29, 1V8. Now this is a big, this should jump out at you. 1V8, this is LCM power 1V8. And it's not 1V8, it's 1.3, 1.3. That's low, that's, that's low. So that's, why is that low? So that's interesting. So we found something that's low. Now here's what's really interesting about this case. So that we notice, okay, we've got a problem there. Our 1v8 image line is 1.36. So it's low, but here's what's crazy about this. If we also measure over here at uh, Chestnut LCM power enable, it's the same value. So let's see if I can kind of do that, do, do both of those at once. So let's see, I don't know if I'll be able to or not. All right, so let's make sure we're, we're awake. Pin 29 is now 1.09. Pin 16, 1.09. See how it's the same, pin 29? is now changed. It's now 1.35. Pin 16, 
So that's what really kind of jumped out at me is I didn't know that. Let's look and see what does that mean on the schematic. So I'm going to click this off and let's head over to the schematic and take a look. What does that mean? So from the schematic, we can see what's going on here. Pin 29 is what we would just guess is power for the LCD, 1V8 LCM connector power line. So this 1V8 comes to pin 29. Then what does it do? I don't have any idea. It goes into the screen and magic happens. I guess it fires up the pixels. I don't have any idea. And then we can see that there's some data lines for image. There's some data lines over here to talk to the screen. And then we have our PP and PN5 V7s, which are uh, generally considered touch power lines from Chestnut. So what does 1V8 LCM really do? I don't really know. However, now I know that pin 16 LCM to Chestnut power enable apparently comes from 1V8 LCM. So it's the same situation as we found, figured out already that from P, the PMU to Photon Alive line turning into reset, it looks like PP 1V8 LCM actually comes from the device. It goes into the screen, it goes through the screen, and it turns into LCM Chestnut Power Enable. Now, LCM Chestnut Power Enable then is going to, to turn on Chestnut. And apparently, LCM Chestnut Power Enable is enough to, to turn on Chestnut if it is low, like it seems to be in this device, because we saw our PP and PN 5v7s were created. So what else is 1v8 LCM connector doing? I don't know. You know, maybe it has some other job inside the screen. So this is what I thought was really interesting, was because of this I bridge, I, I don't think I would have ever done these kind of voltage testing before, because it's so hard. If you don't have this thing, you have to uh, reach under the connector. You know, if you really think about it, like how are you going to actually take these voltage readings when all of the spots that you would be measuring are covered up when you plug a screen in? So that's what's really cool about this thing. So then let's do a test. If that's true, then if I disconnect power, so I've disconnected power, then with the screen connected, let's see if we have straight up continuity. So how's, where's continuity on this bad boy? All right, that looks like it would be continuity. Then let's see, do we have continuity from two, pin 2.9, the 1V8 LCM, all the way over to 16? And we do. That's cool. And then we can kind of say, does that go to anything else? All right, 22 and 24. 22 and 24 also have continuity through the screen with 1V8 LCM. Now these guys, if we look them up, what's 22 and 24? Where is it? Schematics. What is it? 22 and 24 are Sage to Touch VCPL ref and VCPHREF. Now, I don't really know what these guys do. Maybe you guys do. I'm going to guess just from Googling around. I think that CP is charge pump, and I think that the PP and PN 5V7s are created through a charge pump mechanism through Chestnut's Nut. And I'm going to guess L and H are low and high. So uh, voltage charge pump low, voltage charge pump high, REF maybe is a reference voltage. So I'm going to guess that these are some sort of a high and a low reference voltage that maybe have to do with these two lines. I'm not really sure. But now we can, we can see that they are, are, you know, kind of have continuity and therefore are going to have the same screen voltage as this PP1V8 LCM. All right, let's, it's just really cool, I think. So then let's kind of get rid of that. And now my question would be, what happens if we try to go on a hunt to figure out why is our 1V8 voltage low? So let's see. Let's see what you guys are, are telling us here. Does anybody know more about VCPH and L ref? 
All right, let's see. If you have resistance, that means the line is fine. Mm, no, but if the resistance, your the resist all this resistance testing can just tell us is there a short or open on the line? It can't say the line's good. It can just say the line is good. It can say the line is not short or, or open, but it can't say that it's good. So you can still have a, a line that is not short, that's not open, that's not good, because the guy upstairs is not doing his job. At least that's how we explain it at uh, PBRS. All right. What is the name and model of your multimeter? Glad you asked. This particular multimeter is... You guessed it, folks. It is available at iPad Rehab Supply. So let's go back over here, and I'll show you guys. I know it's kind of hard to, hard to find stuff on here. Yeah, here it is. Right here, it's under New Stuff. So this is our multimeter here. And I like this one because it's very bright. The, the um, stock uh, leads that it comes with are really... Um, they're acceptable. I've changed them out for our fine point leads, which you can also find on supply. So the fine point leads are better, but the stock leads that this one comes with are thin enough that you can take most measurements. You'd prefer to have the fine point, but they work okay out of the box. And this Chinese multimeter, it has measurements that, that uh, sometimes are a perfect exact match to the ZXW diode mode readings on so certain connectors. So it's just really nice when your multimeter is really close to the Chinese uh, readings that you're comparing to. So that's why, we, that's why that one is our pick for multimeter. All right, let's get rid of that. And let's see. Okay, so what we have found so far is that we have a low... Um, let's get rid of, let's bring back our, our, uh, side cam. Where are you side cam? So what we know so far is that we are low on one V eight LCM coming into the connector. So now we're going to, we're going to ask why. All right. So let's get rid of that. So why let's go ahead and disconnect this. So thanks, iBridge. And let's just kind of look at that uh, 1V8LCM pin. So it would be pin 29, which is right over here in the very end. So did I mess up the joint at the connector there? I don't think so. It looks pretty good to me. So I think I'm good on my connector joint. So after that, let's just look at the schematic and see where else that line could have some kind of a problem. So let's check and see. So we're talking about this guy, 29 PP1V8 LCM connector. So let's ask, where else does it go? And I always like to look on the schematic rather than you know clicking along on ZXW or something like that because the schematic always gives you more detail. It tells you well, something is no stuff and it can tell you all sorts of little notes and clues that help you understand things a lot better than just clicking on connect the dot style on these board view uh, software. All right, so let's see. We've got from the connector, PP1V8 LCM goes through a filter. So that's a possible failure point and that's a pretty common failure point uh, for this line. And then on the other side, that line is just PP1V8. Now, PP1V8 itself is a pretty big brainstem line of the entire phone. So if we just said, what else is PP1V8? If we followed just PP1V8, we would find that PP1V8 goes lots and lots and lots and lots and lots of places all over. It's a giant brainstem, and it is got to be functional in order for this phone to turn on and be recognized by iTunes. So we can guess that our problem, our problem is likely to be on, if not the connector, which we ruled out, then we're really looking at that filter because that's the only spot so far that would give us um, a you know, difficulty passing, passing that through. So what we can do is just take, let's go back and do a diode mode measurement back in the connector and see whether or not we, we have a, a a problem or a change. All right, so let's do that. Let's go to, um, let's actually, I want to kind of do this other thing. I want to compare ZXW if, 
it will let us. Let's compare ZXW at the same time to see how the readings on the iFlex are the same or different from ZXW readings. All right, so here's ZXW, and we're going to look at that uh, pin 29. So we're going to click resistance to show some of the diode mode readings that ZXW has. All right, so this says uh, it, that we should get a diode mode reading of about 310 on this one. Let's go over and check on those 14 and 16. Yeah, it's about, it's written the same measurements that are printed on the actual I bridge. So this 310, it looks like is a match to ZXW. So let's look over here at the I bridge. And yeah, 310 is what it's written for pin 29. Okay, so then let's do a conventional diode mode reading. Let's plug this in. Now we could do this. Let's actually do it not using the eye bridge. Let's do it right in the connector since we're just focused on this line now. All right, so let's take that reading in the connector. Let's see what is it. Oh, I, I'm, now I should have I should have not taken away my little way the side cam was working. That was dumb. All right. That was dumb. That was dumb. Let's move that stuff. That was silly. All right, there we go. There's our little on-screen, the easy on-screen multimeter. We've retired the trust-based multimeter. All right, let's go to diode mode. Diode mode. All right, red probe on ground. All right, pin 29 is OL. Look at that. It's OL instead of our normal diode mode reading of point of 0.310. So let's follow that back to the actual filter. So where is that filter? Let's check on ZXW. Ah, let's check by showing you ZXW. Here we go. Now let's check from pin 29. Where is that filter? Oh, it's right nearby. It's that guy right there. So the bottom side of the filter connects to the connector. The top side of the filter connects to all of the rest of 1V8. So let's check on that then on the actual board. Let's put our eyes on that thing. And that's the spot right here that kind of looks grungy. So that definitely makes sense. So let's do this. Let's do red probe on ground. So I'm going to put my red probe over here on the sim tray, red probe on ground. And let's measure here in pin 29. Oh, well, now the bottom side of the filter is oh, well, and the top side of the filter. Aha, there we go. So, so it looks like our filter is bad. So our filter must be almost but not quite completely not a wire so it's a little bit of a wire it can't be measured if we kind of just say hey what about uh let's let's just test let's see what happens if we test across the filter here itself sometimes the you know the filter itself can be um fine but it's not soldered onto the board it's popped off let's see where's our straight up resistance all right, here we go. What is the resistance across that filter? So a filter is a wire, so it should be super low. Is it? It is 31 kilo ohms. 31 kilo ohms. So that is going to be uh, high. So it's now turned itself into a 31 kilo ohm resistor instead of a filter, which is a wire. So that explains why we don't have 1.8 volts on the connector side, but it's actually low down at 1.1 or whatever it was. So solution, let's go ahead and swap that filter out and we'll see if that makes everything get better. But this is a pretty common fault. Everybody would already know to kind of look for here. This filter looks bad. This filter does go bad. So that's not really the point of this video. But what I thought was cool was that 
the iBridge was able to let me quickly differentiate between does this sucker have long screen damage causing it to have no image? Does this thing have my connector I just replaced is a line bad? Is something not making good contact? I rule that right away. Or is it something completely different like the one V8 filter problem? So I thought that was really cool. And at the same time, it was able to teach me that um, something I didn't know about how the image circuit worked. So I thought that that was really cool. And I thought that you guys might want to learn that too. So now let's go ahead and see if we have something deeper going on or is this just a straight up, get, this guy went bad. All right, so we'll take that off with the mini hat tweezers. Pyro says, I hope it's just that filter. Me too. I hope it's just that filter too, because I have a conference call in about 20 minutes that I will get in trouble if I'm still streaming. And, huh? 17 minutes. In 17 minutes, but who's counting? All right. Sunday's counting, I know that. All right. So let's take, take him off. Goodbye, sweet filter. All right, now let's make puffy pillows so that we can get a new one on there. And we can take off this guy. Maybe I should have two multimeters. One that just kind of has its own like little dedicated scene. Or I could actually spend the 10 minutes it takes to get the on-screen multimeter, which I bought a while ago, to actually get that hooked up with Paul Daniels software. All right, pads look pretty good. And we're gonna stick a new guy on there. So let's clean that up for a second. And let's see what's going on. It's hard to see a woman fixing an iPhone. And you know what? It's hard to pronounce a name when the name is Larbadoobadabadoobada. What's your name there? Dabadabadoo? I think it's, it's, uh, that could possibly be the most difficult name to pronounce that I've seen all week. Possibly. All right, let's see. Hello from Bulgaria. When a phone doesn't turn on and you have the power supply at 15 to 30 milliamps, what could that be? Oh, many things. If you have a question like that, you should post it uh, on iPad Rehab Forum. And we will ask you lots of questions and we'll look at all your pictures and we'll look at your videos of your measurements and we will help you figure that kind of stuff out. But that is not something that, that you can answer with like a, a, a two second please bro internet solution. Definitely not. All right, so where are we gonna get another one of these dogs? I have already found an iPhone 6 donor board. All right. Dark Sorceress says that he thinks I did an awesome job pronouncing that sexist jerk's name. Thanks, bro. All right. Let's, um, let's see. All right, so this guy is a match. So if you look on the schematic, this little nearby guy is an exact match for this 80 ohm filter and we're gonna take him off and move him over see what happens all right so sunday what what do you how do you respond to a guy that says it's hard to see a woman fixing an iphone i don't because i don't remember fixing an iphone <laughs> <laughs> That's not true. I see you fixing iPhones all the time. IPhone. It's still fixing iPhones if you're just doing screens and stuff like that, you know? That's, that's not hard for guys. They're okay with that. The They're okay if we do lady stuff. If we do lady stuff, like finger fingerprint sensor work. Mm -hmm. Right, is that it? One of the students was talking about seeing a picture of you doing a backlight. Yeah, one of the students saw you doing a backlight filter, so. One and one time only. One and done. Mm -hmm. That was like your uh, Girl Scout badge for micro soldering. Yeah. <laughs> We'll it lasted as long as my kid lasted in Girl Scouts. <laughs> <laughs> the whole one event that never went back. We'll make you a, a sash. Mm -hmm. Christy, will, Christy will sew you on a, a badge. It was, that would... a, it was all an evil plot to get me to start micro-soldering. 
I think that would be really funny if we got like kind of Girl Scout badges where it would be like um, uh, audio IC. You know, you could. Yeah, it's really, really funny. Yeah, like, and you could have like a vest, something like that. Roberto, yes, the eye bridge is definitely worth it. And I'm surprised. I kind of thought it would be sort of um, what I call like one of the, the please bro tools. So why, by that, I mean, you know, if you, if you already know backlight problems, check the backlight line. You don't need the eye bridge to tell you that. But I've been surprised. This is my first job using it. And it taught me something that I didn't know about how the uh, image circuit works. So I thought that was really cool. Mark has been really... Uh, he found a bunch of uses for it. Even in class on Friday, we had uh, a 5S, and we were like, oh, man, there's no iBridge for the 5S, which was a, a bummer because we had some sort of no image problem. We wanted to be able to take our chestnut voltage readings. So it's really quickly kind of, you know, become, it's, it's crossed my threshold of would I get up and cross the room and find this tool? And the answer is yes. Not, not in every case, you know, a lot of these are signature problems, but if you have anything that's open-ended that's based at a connector, then it's definitely good. All right, so let's go back and do our, our diode mode reading. So like right now, I don't need to put the iBridge on. I've, the iBridge told me what line to focus on, which is this pin 29 uh, LCM connector line. But what the iBridge would be good at would be, look at this adjacent connector. Can that pin there for front camera still make good contact? I don't know, and I can't tell. There's no way to tell. I would need to connect a connector on a, a camera and see. So the iBridge connects to that, and it lets you measure, do you actually have the right resistance and voltage reading? That's really cool. It kind of lets you assess these kind of damaged looking connectors and decide, is this something that I really need to replace, or is that connector kind of beat up, but it's functional? Then you can eliminate variables. All right, let's go back in this connector and see what is the result. All right, so now in the connector at pin 29, I am back at my normal diode mode reading, which means that I should be able to get uh, 1.8 volts on that. Let's see if I can. So the next thing I want to try is to, let's see what happens. I will put back on the iBridge and see if we can actually fire up the screen this way. You know, for guys, for guys that do um, like refurbishing, LCD refurbishing, being able to use a screen extender, a lot of the screen extenders that I've seen are kind of janky. So this is, the iBridge is also a screen extender to save your wear and tear on your connectors. All right, so first, let's see if it actually has image now or not. So we'll go ahead and pull this over so that we can all check it out together at the same time and see. All right, so let's, let's check it out. So let's get DC power supply and see if this actually works or are we going to have to do a second stream called Advanced Troubleshooting of Image Circuit After Conference Call? We'll see. All right, so I've plugged in battery. Let's prompt to boot and see what happens. Let's see, says Luis. Yes, Luis, let's see indeed. All right. I see an Apple logo. Yay! That's going to be it. That is our image solution. Now, just for fun, while that thing is booting up, Let's go back to the iBridge and let's see if, let's kind of check out our image voltages now, now that we have image. All right. Okay, iTunes is detecting it. Let's see. And let's go to voltage mode, DC voltage. And we still see the Apple logo on that screen. All right, so now we can check over here at pin 29, and we have 1.76. That's a normal kind of 1V8 voltage on the connector side. All right, so 1.75, and we have image. And it just clicked away when I went to show you guys that. All right, so we have full image. It's, it's booted all the way up, and we can see. I don't know if you guys can see that or not. 
Yeah, maybe not. Maybe not under the microscope. There we go. You guys see that? Touch. Where is it? There we go. There we go. Uh, trust, etc. All right, so it's dimmed down a little bit because of the proximity sensor not being attached. But there we go. So we have this thing booting up and we have image and we have our normal voltage has been restored, which means that we will also have our normal voltage at everything else that's connected to that 1V8 image line, which before we didn't have any idea. And now we know. So there you go. That is uh, a cool use of the iBridge Flex to teach you something. It makes it super easy to do voltage measurements, which for iPhone work has always been just a technical hurdle and therefore not worth it. But if we kind of start using this thing and we get in the habit of testing, uh, of just kind of going down the connector and seeing voltages, I think we'll start noticing a lot more stuff. And that's gonna be really cool. I can't wait to see what you guys noticed. Post them over on uh, iPad Rehab Forum on the always free, it takes a village section, anything cool that you notice like this, that's where that stuff can go. And I will see you guys next time.